In the history of the Ottoman Empire, few women have had a greater impact, and Harem Sultan was one of them. She was the chief favorite consort, and later the legal wife of the Ottoman Sultan, Suleiman the Magnificent. She was the mother of future Sultan, Selim II, and the grandmother of Sultan Murad III. She was the first who broke many Ottoman traditions, and changed the imperial norms on the status of women in the court. She was the first consort to receive the title of Heyski Sultan in the history of the Ottoman imperial harem. Almost used for a century, this title reflected the great power of imperial consorts in the palace, and also in the Ottoman court. Most of them were former slaves. She was the first most eminent, powerful, and controversial figure during the era known as the Sultanate of Women. She became the trendsetter in many ways that all other women who came after her took her as the role model for them. The story of this incredible woman is still intrigues historians. Today in this video, you'll get to know the 10 interesting facts about Harem Sultan's life that you may not know about. Number 1, Harem Sultan was born in between 1502 to 1506. A little is known about the early life of Harem, like every woman in the harem. Her birth date is just based on estimations. According to historians, she was born somewhere between 1502 to 1506. According to some sources, Harem Sultan was originally from Ruthenia, which was then the part of the eastern region of the Kingdom of Poland, in what is now western Ukraine. She was born to a Ruthenian Orthodox priest, whose surname was Lysovsky. Her actual birth name is obscure. Some historians have been written her either Alexandra Lysovska, or Anastasia. She was also known by her nickname Roxelaine, which means the girl from Ruthenia. By some chronologists, it is stated that due to the reddish color of her hair, she was called to be Rosa, Rosa, or Roxolana. Some European ambassadors of that time also portrayed her as having red hair, green eyes, and white skin. Among the Ottomans, her joyful spirit and lively temperament earned her a new name, Harem. She was mostly known as Heyski Harem Sultan, or Harem Heyski Sultan where Harem or Karam in Persian means, the cheerful one. Number 2, she was captured by Crimean Tatar during a slave raid. It is not known exactly that how she was brought to the harem. According to historians, in the reign of Salem I, somewhere between 1512 to 1520, she was captured by Crimean Tatars during a slave raid in Eastern Europe, and eventually, they took her to the Ottoman capital. It is suggested that, Tatars may have first taken her to the Crimean city of Kofa, which was a major slave trade center, before taking her to Istanbul. In Istanbul, Valide Hofsa Sultan selected Harem as a gift for her son, Sultan Suleiman. By some other unidentified sources, she was probably purchased as a gift for Sultan Suleiman by his boyhood friend, Ibrahim Pasha. In the 16th century, Michaela Lituanus wrote that, the most beloved wife of the present Turkish emperor, the mother of his son, who will govern after him, was kidnapped from our land. Number 3, she entered in the harem when she was around 15 years of age. The exact year when Roxolina or Harem entered in the harem is unknown, but some scholars believe that she came in 1520, 
the time when Suleiman became the Sultan. She was probably around 15 years of age, when she entered the harem of a predominantly Islamic empire. As a Christian, she was only acceptable as a slave girl, or a concubine. When she decided to change her religion and convert to Islam, her decision was considered skepticism. In the harem, the influence of harem over the Sultan soon turned to legendary, and she became a rival to Mahi Devran, the mother of the eldest son of Sultan Suleiman. Number 4, Harem Rise from a Harem Slave to Suleiman's Legal Wife In the imperial harem, she unprecedentedly rose through the ranks, and soon became the most prominent consort of Sultan Suleiman, beside Mahi Devran Sultan. Harem became the first Heiski Sultan, a title which was equal to the rank of Empress's consort in Europe, and elevate the status of a slave girl even higher than the Ottoman princesses. In around 1533 or 1534, breaking the 200 years old Ottoman tradition, Sultan Suleiman freed Harem from slavery, and married her in a formal ceremony, and made her his legally wedded wife. Sultan Suleiman conferred the 100,000 ducats to Harem as a dowry. She was also given the title of Sultan, which indicated that she was a part of the dynasty. This attracted disfavor and jealousy not only from her rivals in the harem, but also from the general public outside the palace. Many blamed her for using witchcraft to enchain Sultan to herself. Sultan Suleiman was deeply in love with her. Historians argue that, the love Sultan felt for Harem underlay all the successes that he achieved during his lifetime. He showed his faithful love, and adored the beauty of Harem in his love poems, under his pen name, Mahibi. He used to call her his everything, and even my Sultan in a love letter. Harem Sultan also wrote many love letters to Suleiman when he was away for campaigns. Number 5, Harem was allowed to give birth to more than one son. She was allowed to give birth to more than one son of Sultan, which was a clear violation of the old rule of the imperial harem, one concubine mother, one son. This law was designed to prevent both, the influence of the mother over Sultan, and the bloodshed of brothers for the throne. The exact dates of her children's births are disputed. She had five children with Suleiman, Shah Zadi Mehmed, Myrima Sultan, Shah Zadi Salem, Shah Zadi Bayezid, and Shah Zadi Jihangir. According to some historians, she possibly bore another son to Sultan Suleiman, named Shah Zadi Abdullah, who died while still a toddler, but few other historians recognized him as the son of Mahi Devran. The last child of Sultan Suleiman and Harem, Shah Zadi Jihangir, was born with a hunchback, but up till that time Harem had borne enough healthy sons to secure the future of the Ottoman dynasty. Number 6, Harem became the first woman to remain in the Sultan's court. Harem ultimately achieved power through her husband. She not only became the partner of Suleiman in his household, but also participated in state affairs. She probably acted as the advisor of her husband. She played an active role in Sultan's court, and influenced the internal and foreign politics of the Ottoman Empire. She was the first woman who spent her entire life in the harem. According to Ottoman imperial family traditions, a consort of the Sultan was only able to stay in the harem, until her son reached the age of maturity. After this, 
The prince was used to being sent to rule in their princely province, away from the capital, and his mother would have supposed to accompany him. These consorts were not allowed to return to the capital, until unless their sons succeeded to the throne. Harem also defiance this old custom, she never left Suleiman, and stayed in the harem even after her three sons went to govern in their princely provinces for their training. Another reason was that, the youngest son of Harem, Shah Zadi Jahangir, was sick, and born hunchback. This required Harem to stay in the palace while her sons were sent for Sanjak Bailiai. However, she did not leave them alone, and often visited the places where her sons were performing their duties. Number 7, Harem and Rustem Pasha were blamed for the execution of Shah Zadi Mustafa. Sultan Suleiman's oldest surviving son, Shah Zadi Mustafa, was a big hurdle for Harem's sons to succeed the throne. She struggled hard by phasing to take Mustafa out of this competition and open the ways for her sons. To gain some additional power and control, Harem gave her daughter Myrima in marriage to a courtier named Rustem Pasha, who became the Grand Vizier later in 1544. In 1553, Mahi Devran's son Mustafa was executed on the orders of his father. Harem and Rustem were blamed for plotting his execution, because he stood between Harem's sons and the imperial succession. Though there were no sources to prove that, but she was also suspected of plotting the executions of Ibrahim Pasha, a grand vizier and close friend of Suleiman, in 1536, in order to eliminate a rival influence on the Sultan, because Ibrahim's support was with Shah Zadi Mustafa. Number 8, she was one of the most powerful and influential women in Ottoman history. Her popularity made her one of the most powerful and influential women in Ottoman and world history at the time. Harem's power in the harem was incomparable. When the mother of Suleiman, Hafsa Sultan passed away in 1534, she became the only ruler of the harem. As a result, she became a divisive figure, and was accused of conspiring against and exploiting her political opponents. Her story as a powerful political woman in Ottoman court was used to fuel the fears of Western Europeans. According to the ambassadors of the time, she was the greatest love of Sultan Suleiman's life, his companion, his official wedded wife, and an extraordinary female character. Her salary was about 2,000 aspers a day, making her one of the highest paid heskis of her time. Number 9, Harem is known for several public and charity works. Aside from her political duties, she was engaged in several public and charity works. She was known as a philanthropist and very generous to the poor. She commissioned numerous mosques, madrasas, and hammams. She became a patroness of many public works with the Ottoman chief imperial architect, Sinan. In 1539, they started their first big project, Heyski Sultan Complex, in Istanbul. This complex includes, a mosque, two Quranic schools, a fountain, and a hospital. It is said that, she probably used her dowry to finance this project. In 1556, she also commissioned a charity building, the Heyski Harem Sultan Hammam, an Islamic bath to serve the community of worshippers in the nearby Ayah Sophia. She also built public complexes in Adirne and Ankara. She also built resting places for pilgrims traveling to the Islamic holy city of Mecca, and a public soup kitchen for poor pilgrims. 
In 1552, one of her greatest public works was, the Heiski Sultan Emirate, in Jerusalem, a large public soup kitchen to feed the poor and the needy. Number 10, Harem Sultan died on 15 April 1558. Harem, the greatest love, and companion of Sultan Suleiman, died in April 1558, in Istanbul. The actual reason for her death is unknown, but it is said that, in early 1558, she became ill, and suffered from malaria and shoulder pain for a while. She was buried in a mausoleum, adjacent to the place set for her husband Suleiman's tomb within the Suleimaniye mosque complex. In that way, she became the first woman in Ottoman history to have been buried with this honor. She fought hard to see her sons on the throne, but it was not written in her destiny to be lived as the Queen Mother. Sultan Suleiman just lived eight years more after her, and her second son, Salem, succeeded his father as the new Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. Harem was a fascinating figure because of her boundless ambitions and exceptional position, not even in Ottoman imperial court, but beyond the empire. She and her story might be exaggerated in depicted art, but she is known as the woman of firsts in Ottoman history, who defied and changed many of the Ottoman traditions. Though the European male artists had no access to harem in the harem, but they created the imaginary visual identity of this famous Heiski Sultan. By observing her few surviving portraits, it is hard to say whether she was actually as beautiful as she was described, but, what made her prominent was her intelligence and smiling face. And perhaps, this is what conquered the heart of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, and he fell in love with her.